welcome, this is your 5 minute geography lesson. We're covering theme 2, element 8, sustainable urban areas. Stand quietly behind your chairs. I'm Mr S and I'll be your 5 minute teacher. Just like in rural areas, urban ones need to be sustainable. They need to be, uh, because they're built up areas, they need to be ones that have minimal damage to the environment, have a sound economic base, resources and jobs that are equally shared, and that there is a strong sense of community and that local people are involved in the decision making. Now urban areas have their own unique challenges in terms of how and what happens as well as sustainability elements. So two big things that planners have to argue over is whether or not they're going to build any development on greenfield or brownfield. So greenfield is land that's never been built on before. It's virgin land. So you can see in the picture, it's fields, grass, trees, natural ecosystem. There's advantages of building on greenfield. It's a lot easier and cheaper because there's nothing you have to actually knock down. And you don't have to put any surveys in place because it more than likely all that land is going to be fresh, no pollution that might affect the local population. But there are negatives to this as well. The big one, it's not very sustainable at all. What you're doing is destroying a natural habitat and ecosystem to build new infrastructure, houses, office blocks. And the likelihood for an urban area is this green field is going to be on the edge of the city. Now that's important to note because that means that over time that city is expanding outwards. It's called urban sprawl. So every time a new development happens on Greenfield, they're adding new houses, they're adding new buildings to the edge of the city so the city keeps expanding outwards. And it's going to keep encroaching on even more green land or greenfield land as the developments continue. It's also a negative because it doesn't have any hookups to anything. So there's no electricity, there's no road networks, there's no water or sewage, and all of that has to be built into it as well. The alternative are to look at brownfield sites. Those that are one, these are ones that have been built on before and more often than not, they've probably become derelict over time. So you can see in this photograph, we've got a really scruffy looking old building that looks like it hasn't been used in a long, long time. And it looks a bit of, bl of a blight on the landscape. It doesn't look in keeping with the local area and it's probably detracted and made the local area look run down. The benefit of building on a brownfield is, well, the government or the council are going to be really, really eager to get rid of this eyesore from their city. So they're more likely not going to give you pl uh, planning permission really easily. And because there's already a building there, more likely than not that there's already hookups available. So electricity, water, sewage, road networks are already there. So that's a win already. And you're not building on anything new. So you're not destroying natural environments and habitats in order to build something there. There are some issues with brownfield sites. It's the, one of the main reasons why people end up shying away from them in favour of greenfield. And that's to do with the limited amount of space that's available. You can see in this picture, it's very enclosed, this plot of land. So you've got buildings all the way around the two sides that we can see. And the likelihood is, around the back, they'll also be the same. So you can't be extravagant with your builds. If you're building houses, they'll have to be really tightly packed together and pretty small. If it's an office block, you're going to be limited in terms of how you can stick parking in there as well, because you've got limited by the space from the buildings around you. There's also an issue that a lot of cities in the UK were designed during the Industrial Revolution, and then on, they've had some heavy industry in there in a lot of places. So if there was coal mining in the area, if there was heavy metal work, if there was uh, shipbuilding, there's a high risk that the soil might be contaminated with heavy metals or poisonous chemicals. And before you can even start building, you've got to test the soil. And if it is that the case, you've got to dig up all the soil, clean it and put it back. So that's even more expense on top of the fact that you've got to knock down this building as well. So it is a more sustainable method. However, space is limited and it is an expensive thing to complete. Which leads us on to how can we be sustainable in urban areas? The diagram on the left is called the sustainability stool. It's got three legs, environmental, social, and economic. 
There are elements that would be covered in both rural and urban areas, but there are some unique ones that we need to consider because we're in an urban area. So let's have a look at what some of these are. Like everything that we've discussed, even in rural, sustainability in terms of social and environmental and economic, it should be active, inclusive and safe for all members of the community. But something that's probably even more important for a urban area is the sense of a strong local culture. In rural areas, that's not so much of an issue because there's not many people living there, so you tend to know everybody. And because there's not as many services, you tend to rely on each other as well to get by. So that develops a strong culture and a strong local community. Now picture yourself living in a city. Well, you, there are so many people around, even in your local neighborhood, that you probably don't even know who your neighbors are. It's that busy. So you need to try and support people to bring that sense of strong culture and community together. You need to have a thriving economy for local jobs and for local services. And that's important because you want to spread out all these jobs and services across your city. You don't want to have one area of the city being the one area that's most reliant upon, or you've got loads of traffic going to that one area when you can spread it out across the entire city. As always, we need to be environmentally friendly and provide, most importantly for the city, green spaces for people to enjoy. It's very easy for a city to just look like a complete concrete mass. Newcastle is actually really good at providing green spaces. There's about three or four parks in Newcastle and you've got Town Moor, which is unheard of inside a major city. Conserve energy and water where possible. Installing solar panels onto uh, existing roofs. Most new builds now come with a requirement that they actually have to provide some energy saving matter like solar panels or maybe it's collecting rainwater so that it can be used to flush toilets or having appliances that are energy efficient and turning off appliances and taps when they're not in use or straight away after you've used them. We also need to have good transport and communication links. Cities can be massive and if you don't have good transport from get to A to B, it can really hurt your economy. But probably most important in a city is the idea of this integrated transport systems. You don't want people to rely on using cars in cities because the road network can't cope and the pollution will be too much. So if you've got bus networks, light rail, maybe it's a metro system or a subway system and they're all linked together, it's much easier for people to get around and it promotes people to leave the car at home. And then, as always, to be fair, and have effective governance which allows all local people to be involved in the decision making process on what happens in their community. Well, that brings our lesson to an end, but continue at your own pace by completing the Now Try Task for Homework, class dismissed.